Amanda and this is my channel Mindful Dinosaur. Welcome back to my channel. Unless you're new here, then welcome. On this channel I do a lot of mental health stuff by sprinkling other things just for fun. Um, so basically as you guys, some of you guys know, um, it was recently Need a Week National Eating Disorder Awareness Week. Um, and I didn't post a video for it during that week. So I'm going to be posting a video now about it. Um, so as you can probably tell by the title, I'm going to be doing Reasons to Recover now. I put some Reasons to Recover a while back on my Instagram story, but I decided to add some more and make it into a video just maybe to get your mind thinking like, I don't know. Um, so yeah, um, and if you guys like have any more Reasons to Recover or you have any personal ones, comment them down below. I would love to hear them. Uh, so yeah, let's get right into things. So one of the <laughs> things that kind of helped me a little mantra to uh, get healthy was Starbucks tastes better than Ensure's. I don't know if you've ever had an Ensure, but it's gross, it's thick, and it creates like a film around your mouth and it gives you gas. <laughs> so they're kind of gross. Starbucks, mm, way better than Ensure's. So that's kind of been like a motivator for me. I, I hate Ensure's. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and then another one is exercise to feel good, not to burn calories. Because a lot of times when I'm deep in my eating disorder, I exercise only to lose weight, to burn calories, to just basically not for fun, to get rid of things, um, rid of parts on my body. So exercising, it does make you feel really good. It releases endorphins. You just feel great afterwards, as long as you don't overdo it, obviously. Um, so yeah, that's one of the bigger ones too. Then another one is have hair. When you have an eating disorder and you restrict or purge, your hair falls out. My hair had gotten so thin and it started breaking off and it's finally just now starting to thicken up. Um, but it took so long to actually thicken up. It was just really annoying. <laughs> and especially since I want to be a hairdresser, I need hair to actually get customers. <laughs> so yeah. And then another one is to have teeth, as you might know or may not know, I don't know. Um, when you purge, it ruins your enamel. Um, I actually saw someone at the hospital who had teeth had fallen out and I really don't want to get that, especially since I'm going into the beauty industry, but hopefully having teeth is like a big motivator for most people. Um, yeah, it's just, ugh. it hurts. Like it's sad to see that other people have lost teeth and that I don't know, it's just really sad to me. Like, they're still beautiful no matter what, but I can only imagine how bad that feels, like, if their confidence goes down. And then another motivator is you can be anything you want in life, have anything you want in life. Um, you can do whatever you want, have fun, be free, have freedom, because when you're on lockdown, you have no freedom, people have to check you after you go to the bathroom, you have to be on watch. 24-7 while you eat, while after you eat, you can't exercise. So basically, have freedom um, to do what you love and you can be anything you want, whether it be go to school, work at McDonald's, be a hairdresser, be an actress, work in accounting, whatever you want to be, you can be. And then another one is feel confident. Feeling confident, it comes a long way after recovery. I mean, there's spurts every now and then where you'll feel confident but eventually you will. Like you'll feel better about your body in your body. You'll feel better about yourself. You'll feel more capable of doing things on your own. Um, so that's definitely something I am looking forward to getting when I am further down in recovery because that would pretty much be amazing. Like even people without eating disorders don't feel confident all the time and that's completely okay. It's just part of life, but hopefully eventually it will get a little bit better. And then another one is having healthy relationships, whether it be friendships, family member relationships, or romantic relationships. Um, when you are in a relationship with Ed, you can't, you don't really have time for anyone else. You can't think about anyone else. You can't put your effort into having relationships when you're always focused on Ed. But one of the things is you won't feel cold all the time because when you're severely underweight, you do get really cold and you get like hair on your face, um, which 
it's kind of annoying because even in summer you have to bundle up so it's really something to look forward to which I am happy with now that I don't feel cold all the time. Um, another one just being able to enjoy life not focusing everything on your eating disorder you have so much more time when you let go of your eating disorder because all you do is focus on it but then once you let go of it you have so much more time to do the things you love like if you like to read you get to read you can't focus on reading when your brain is foggy. So you have time to read, you can do things like sing, because you actually have a voice again, or you have the energy to ride a bike, just having the energy to do anything really. And then, oh my God, this is a good one, being able to enjoy food, because food, food is really good, but it's not always gonna be easy. It's gonna be really rough in the beginning trying to be able to even just get the food down but eventually food will start tasting good and you'll start to be able to challenge yourself and eat foods that you haven't in a long time and you'll actually be able to enjoy the taste. Even if you feel bad afterwards, you at least prove to yourself that you're capable of eating something you love. And then this kind of goes with confidence, but being able to accept your body, you don't have to love it. You don't have to really like it even, but just accepting it, being okay, realizing that this is your body, this is what you are given, and just being okay with your body. Eventually it will get better and you will feel more confident, but just the first step is starting to be okay with the way you are. Another one, wear clothes that make you feel good. Um, don't try to fit into your old clothes that you wore when you were sick. Feel clothes, even buy a new wardrobe, that's something to look forward to. Get rid of your old clothes, buy a new wardrobe. Clothes that make you feel good about yourself, that you feel confident in. And then, so these are just some of the ones that really motivate me, but find your own personal motivators. I challenge you to write them down, create a list, and try some out, just see if ones work. If they don't, no harm done, just find another one. And even if you can't find internal motivators, which is really, it's okay, it happens. Look for the external ones, set goals for yourself. Like, one of the things that I love to do, goals that I set for myself, if I didn't act on certain symptoms for a period of time, I would go to a concert, I would let myself buy this, um, I would just set little goals for the, yourselves and even just look outside at the friendships and family members you have. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for them. So I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped like a little bit at least. Make sure to comment down below your motivators and feel free to DM me on Instagram. Um, I will leave the links to my Instagrams down below. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Um, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you can see when I post more videos. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.